Joshua chapter 7. We're going to continue Sin in the Camp part 2 today. Sin in the Camp part 2. Sin in the Camp part 2. Joshua chapter 7. We're going to look at, we're going to read some verses today. Joshua chapter 7, verse 6. So we're going to continue to look at the sin of Achan, which brought sin in the camp. Joshua chapter 7, verse 6. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites? To destroy us, would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall environ us around, and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Verse 10, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I have commended them. For they have even taken of the cursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Verse 13, up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come men by men. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. Verse 16, So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Sarhites, and he brought the family of the Sarhites, men by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household, man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me, now what thou hast done, hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed. I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. Verse 23. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, 
Why hast thou traveled us? The Lord shall travel thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Brother Keller, can you please pray for the message? Father, thank you for letting us gather today again, Lord. Um, thank you for every person that's here today. Father, it's such a privilege to be in church, um, especially in this day and age when a lot of people don't have a church to go to, Lord. Amen. So thank you for this opportunity to come here. Please help us to realize that this really is special. Father, uh, so many times we get caught up with life, things in life, we get distracted, and sin catches up to us, Lord Father, and we don't want that to affect the church, Lord. As we yeah. hear Pastor Jesus preaching today, please help us to keep that in mind. Help us to really live for you and help us to take our fellowship with you very seriously. Yeah. So that. Yeah. And we can learn from these uh, these scriptures that you provided to us, Lord Father. Please use Pastor Jay. Yeah. Fill him with the Holy Spirit as he preaches your word unto us. Help us to open our ears, open our hearts. Really help us to be willing to change, Lord, so that we can really praise you and make sure that you use us to our church to the best way you can, Lord. Father, we pray you please be with us for the rest of the day. Keep us safe, Lord. And in Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen. 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 Sin in the camp, part two. Part one, discuss what Achan did affect that innocent people. Your actions will always have consequences, whether it be good or bad. And as you go on with your Christian walk, you realize more and more that what I do as a Christian, will determine many of the folks around me and their future, and for some, for their eternity. You are the only Bible that many people see. And if you are that bad testimony, then many people will reject Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, because you yourself are not someone to be you know, followed or accepted or exemplary, but you're just like everyone else. And as we go on to the rest of the passage in chapter 7, you see now Joshua has found out something's wrong. They just defeated Jericho, mighty Jericho, but they just lost to, you know, people of AI, you know, 12,000 or so people, 6,000 men small people, and he's devastated. 36 men died as a result of ache and sin. Again, I have to reiterate, one person's sin brought this death to innocent people. If you are going to continue to sin, you are going to affect innocent people. Your family, who are innocent will be affected, and they will be affected negatively, and they will pay for your sin. Can you believe it? Because of your sin, people around you have to pay for it as well. God is fair. God is just. Yes. We know that. And in this case of Achan, it affected the whole nation of Israel. Because in the Old Testament, Israel were the child of God. So when you sin against God, what happens? The whole nation had to pay for it. And when we see verses you know, 6 through 9, we see that this affected the people greatly. Look at verse 5. Let's go up to verse 5. And the, at the end of verse 5, it says, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. They were defeated by AI. Now they just want to give up. What does sin bring to the camp? They bring heart to quit. People are ready to quit now. Many times when things happen in the ministry, and, you know, we've been around for a little bit, and last 25 years, when you look back, many times 
when sin is in the camp, sin is in the school, sin is in the ministry, what happens is that it affects those people, innocent people, and they can't handle it. They're ready to quit. Even though they just experience mountaintop experience, they just experience victory against Jericho. You experience, experience a lot of victories in your life against sin. You know, you experience victory when you're witnessing to people. You experience victory in many areas of your Christian walk. But however, because there's sin in the camp, what happens? People are ready to quit. People are ready to quit because of you. I mean, how scary it's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ when people quit because of you, because of you. Because you brought sin into the camp. Can you imagine? There are like 100 people at the judgment seat of Christ just pointing fingers at you. You know, my faith and my, you know, walk with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was negatively affected because of you. You know, when you brought sin into the world, I mean, when you brought sin into the camp, you started gossiping about the pastors and pastors' wives and all the leaders and all the brethren. I joined in. And what's the result, right? Myself and my family, who didn't even know about it, just quit. And disciplines do happen. I'm like, you know what? You call me back and then you say stupid stuff again that everything's justified, actions are justified, and I go along with you and I fall again with you, my family, and rest of the people. People are always ready to quit in this ministry because devil hates our ministry. It's a Bible-believing ministry. I mean, as our brethren pray, and as people who listen to our message online, they know how precious it is to have a local church somewhere. There are very few Bible-believing local churches out there. We have plenty of charismatics. We have plenty of Catholic church. We have plenty of Presbyterian. We have plenty of everything else. But when it comes to KJV only, dispensationalism, the doctrine, learning, and all that, standing up for the King James Bible and not compromising in any way those Bible-believing churches. There are very few. People are ready to quit, though, because your, your hearts are like those waves. It always goes up and down, up and down. When the waves become too large, you think you're going to be capsized. So before that happens, you're ready to quit. And we're t we're, when we see this example, Joshua is no exception. The man of valor. I mean, we're talking about Joshua, man of war. I mean, he was ready to fight against the giants back in Numbers 13, 14. I mean, this is fellow who challenged for the sake of the Lord. But he's saying, God, why did you ever bring us over this Jordan? You know, can you believe it? I mean, we should have just stayed there, right? This person, Joshua, he's like, listen to that. He just sounds like those griping, murmuring Israelites out in the wilderness. I mean, this is like the low point of Joshua's life. He lost his faith. Why did he lose his faith at this point? He's acting just like every backslidden sinner out there. Why? Because sin came into the camp, a cursed thing. Your sin will affect up and down everybody inside the church. Not just, you know, your own crew, cronies around you, but it's going to affect everybody. It's going to affect the pastors, pastor's wife, all the way down to young people out here, little children. Every single person will be affected by your sin. If you don't recognize that there are people who's ready to quit because of you and because of your sin, I mean, God will really, really destroy you. 
in the Old Testament, God had to show that if you mess around with my law, you're going to pay for it. But, I mean, consequences of sin in chapter 7 is scary. Achan, his wife, sons, daughters, everything that he had, he had to pay for it with his life. And it was, everything was burned. You think that, hey, you know, no one will find out. But God will never, ever let it go without right, just judgment. I mean, that's the hardest thing for sometimes people to wake up and realize that, you know, I've gotten away with it. I will continue to get away with it. You can't. You cannot. Going back to it, so Joshua is ready to quit. And he's like, oh, and now he's like murmuring against God. Look at verse 8. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? I mean, there wasn't much that he could say you know, as a soldier. You should never give your back to the enemies. In the battle, what happens? If you turn around and you give your back to the enemies, what happens? You die. I mean, you have a free range. Imagine if there's, you know, my enemies out there. Say you're in a World War II. Can you imagine? You're the Germans, right? And you're the American side. And you're like, hello. You know, I'm scared of you. So I'm just going to turn around and I'm just going to go away. So just leave me alone. Right? I mean, 100 bullets going to come your way. Bible, in Ephesians 6, armor of God, does not talk about anything for the back. Everything is the breastplate, the shield, and the sword is for the forward assault. That's it. In Christian warfare, in your Christian walk, you can't go back. You can't turn your back against the Satan, the world, and the flesh. Then you're going to lose. Yes. That's why retreat as a Christian is not an option. If you want to have victory in your Christian life, if you want to have victory as a church, you have to move forward. Right now, what was the mindset of Joshua and the Israelites? They're thinking, thinking about retreat. You know, it, would, it would have been better, you know, other side of Jordan. But that's what devil wants you to think. If there's sin in the camp, when you have those type of thoughts come to you, man, it's a good time for me to quit. I can't stand this stuff happening in the church, right? People bickering against each other, complaining against the leadership, all that, blah, blah, blah. People hiding their sin. I thought everybody was angel, you know in the Bible-believing church, but I've been here for two days, and man, they're all devils, you know. They all only care about themselves, you know. Man, they always look at my hair, my makeup, my dress, my suit, my shoes, you know, what car I drive, you know, trying to find out where I live, you know. They're like, these brethren are worse than these private investigators out there. Everybody wants to be in everyone's business, right? You should worry about your own business. I mean, that's number one. I mean, that alone should keep you busy. But if you, don't, if you can't keep your busy with your own business, then something's wrong with you. I mean, you're probably sitting on your couch, you know, watching TV all day or playing with your phone all day. You know, you got a lot to worry about yourself. You got to read your Bible. You got to pray. You got to witness. You got to work hard. You got to raise a family. You know, all those things. But if you are in that state, You have to realize, you know, retreat is not an option for me, right? I can't be sitting down. I can't be just, you know, be a Debbie Downer, you know, be in a weak state as a defeated state. You have to continue. But we all go through it. Don't get me wrong. You know, you and I can say that, you know, man, that Joshua, I'm better than Joshua. Don't think that either, right? You and I are not better than Joshua, you know? I mean... Don't even, I'm not even close to it, and you're not even close to it. I mean, this is Joshua we're talking about. 
But the heroes that we see in the Bible, they all go through it too, right? Elijah was tired of it, you know. He just wanted to die, right? But you see that nobody's perfect. Everybody sometimes wants to quit. And it gets, I guess, gets bigger and bigger and exemplified when sin stays in the camp. Yeah. Because God cannot bless it. He cannot bless our ministry if sin continues to stay in our ministry. I mean, all kinds of sin. And a lot of times, people don't realize uh, this little sin is okay. It's not okay. Right. These small sins will grow and grow and grow. It will grow and grow and grow. And that's where, you know, you see, you know, one of the most wicked sins in the Word of God is, you know, like fornication, adultery. Right. They don't happen overnight. I mean, when you see the Israelites, when they were messing up, you know, they were doing a lot of perverted stuff. Think about it. When Moses went up, you know, when he came back down, I mean, it was, it was hot mess, to say the least. What happens is that, you know, this is another point, when that sin persists inside the church, many times these actions will lead to fornication and adultery. When you are so filled with sin, what happens is that you give spaces. You are vulnerable. And when someone comes in, fills that space, then those inappropriate relationships happen. And God wants to prevent that from happening. That's why 1 Corinthians 5, what was God doing? Punishing that person who was having, I mean, who was fornicating with his mom, stepmom. So that's why that person had to be punished, given to Satan. The amazing thing is that because church, Corinthian church, those brethren follow what the Bible said, the person got right. So everyone has a chance to get right. It's just a lot of times that you folks, you know, so-called holy brethren, you know, steps in and messes things up. I could talk to them. You know, you know, don't get me wrong. Maybe someone knew that Aiken already did that. I mean, it's a, we're talking about 1.5 million people. Yeah. So, and especially with people's tendency to be attracted to sin, I don't doubt maybe one or two out of 1.5 million knew what was going on. Right. And what do they do? They don't say nothing. I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe Aiken will give me some stuff later. You know, man, I want some of that silver. I want some of that gold. Man, that garment, you know, from Babylon garment. Oh, man, you know, I got to have a piece of that. I mean, sometimes that's you. Yes. Inside the ministry, outside the ministry, listening. You folks are the same. You know what's going on. You know what's going on with all the people. And your position is, you know what? It's all right. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big of a deal. Yes. I mean, it was in the later in the points of a message, but I'll go to it right now. When you sin, you sin against God. Amen. Nobody else. Right. You're sinning against God. Amen. Quran says you sin against the soul. <laughs> Foolish. You right. sin against God yes. because you break the law that was set up by God. Amen. So when you sin, you don't sin against me. You don't sin against your wife or your husband, your children, your best friend, or anybody. You sin against God. Yes. You lie to your family, you sin against God. Yes. You lie and then you cover things up, you sin against God. Yes. All these Israelites were sinning against God. They're not just sinning against Joshua or their other tribes. They're sinning against God. You have to realize this. You are sinning against God. And especially if you're sinning where it's affecting the whole congregation like Achan did, 
Man, think about it. Your result should be Romans 8.13. If you continue in it, if you don't get right. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Yes. I mean, obviously, you know, when you accepted Christ in the New Testament, curse is all taken away from you because you're going to go to heaven. Yes. But you will still be condemned, though. Right? Yes. It's not eternal condemnation. Physical condemnation is coming your way. I mean, God destroyed Achan and the whole family and the flocks and everything. And you sin against him? New Testament time? You got to pay for it. You have to. That's what the Bible says. Again, I, we don't do out of personal feelings. We don't do anything out of emotions. We just try to follow what the Bible says. Amen. That's what the Bible-believing church are supposed to do. Amen. No compromising anything. If I do the same thing, I should be judged. I should be disciplined the same way. Yes. There's no difference. It's just that God gives you and I enough mercy and grace to get right. Amen. Before, like Achan, he was caught red-handed. Many of you guys don't do anything until you get caught red-handed. When you get caught red-handed, it's too late. Yes. Many people get, many people are like, I'm, I'm guilty, man, I'm guilty. I better get right, you know. I better get right with the Lord. I better talk to the people that I've wronged, you know. Because naturally speaking, if you've done some, if you sin against God, when you get right with the Lord, your heart will be like, man, I got to go talk to people that I've wronged, right? This is natural. You know, if you're a Christian, especially you've heard the body of Christ, you're going to. I mean, think about it. You know, you hurt your hand, right hand, you know, you're cooking, and then you cut it. I mean, you're just going to leave it alone? You're going to put first day, band day, whatnot. You're going to take care of it. And then, you know, if, if right hand could talk to left hand, you know, right hand would be like, I'm sorry, man, left hand, you know, for cutting you. And I wasn't paying attention, right? You know. In the body of Christ, you have to remember, you, as you commit sin, and the sin stays inside the camp, you are affecting members of it. If I commit sin, I'm affecting the whole members. You're committing sin, you're affecting the whole members of body in Christ. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So this day, you have to make up, a, make up your mind. I mean, don't be like in the middle or gray area. As a Christian, you have to move forward. Amen. Man, just standing where you are, what's that different than retreating when everybody's going forward? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll look at verses 25 through 27. The Bible says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. So when you sin, you bring black eye to the body of Christ. Yes. Think about it. Don't you ever think about your testimony outside of church? I mean, you're also scared about inside the church, but think about outside. People out there don't distinguish between you and me from Presbyterian, from Methodist, from Catholic. They all lump us together, so-called Christians. And you sin like that, then what do they say? Oh, that's a Christian for you. You know, I'm glad you know, I'm not a Christian. Man, they're abusers, right? They have scandals all the time. You know, fornicating going on everywhere, adultery going on everywhere. Well, why should I be a Christian? Right. See, you see the fact that you bring so much Schism, division, negativity, and you bring dishonor to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. Simple as that. 
when you continue to live in sin, commit sin, and let the sin stay in the camp. I mean, if you're going to continue to let your sin stay in the camp, go ahead. God's going to reveal it one day as he always does. And there's going to be consequences of sin. Because your disobedience is severe. When you disobey God, it's not something light. It's very, very severe. And you have to go through the devastating effects of sin. You have to. Because that's what the Bible says. Let's go back to Joshua. Let's go back to Joshua. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7. Joshua chapter 7. Verse 11. Let's go to verse 10. Let's go. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? The next point is that there's need for spiritual discernment in the camp. You and I have to recognize what's going on, spiritually speaking, inside the camp, inside the church. Right now, Joshua is in a prayer meeting, as you could imagine, right? But the Lord tells him, what does he say? Verse 10, get thee up. He said, get up. It wasn't time to pray. Bob Jones Sr. said that duties never conflict. In other words, duties need to be prioritized. Devil is very, very subtle. When you should be out there working, he's going to make you pray. When you should be moving, he's going to make you stay. When you should do the right thing, he's going to make you do the wrong thing. Priorities, priorities. What's happening here? I mean, sin is in the camp. Now the leader, Joshua, is praying his heart out. Nothing wrong with it, right? But God goes, you know what? It's not time to pray. You gotta take some action. You gotta get up. Many of you, including myself, when it's time to action, we just stay still yes. and just pray, right? Expecting God to just, you know, roll out, you know, go from the heaven, right? right. You know. I mean, we, don't, we absolutely want to do nothing and just let God do everything for us. It doesn't work like that. Amen. You have to do your work. You have to do your job. You have to move. How many times when sin's in your life, you don't do anything about it? You just stay. Good. You're like, eh, uh, you know what? I feel bad. And then you just stay. You don't do anything. You don't get on your knees. You don't do true repentance, you know. You don't try to read the Bible to cleanse yourself. I mean, those are the solutions, but you don't do it. You're like, ah, you know what? It's not for me. No action. If your duty is to, you know, be in a church, you be in the church. If your duty is out there to witness, you witness. If your duty is to be at home, spend time with family, you do it. Duties never conflict. I mean, for example, say one of you guys, you know, you're going to a Bible college, and you have a, you know, Hebrew class. You hate that class, you know, Hebrew grammar class. But you're called to go to the school and finish, right? And suddenly you hear, hey, there's a great, great evangelist coming. And then you tell your pastor, you know what? I can't miss that preaching pastor. And the pastor goes, what's your duty? Are you supposed to study right now? He goes, yeah. Then you study. What's the point? You got to do what you're supposed to do. Yes. It doesn't matter. I mean, devil will always put things in front of you, around you, to do the next right thing instead of the right thing. A lot of times, Christians especially Bible-believing, hardcore Christians get into trouble. They care about everybody else, but they don't care about their family. A lot of times, that's what happens. If your home is not strong, forget it. 
Lord cannot bless it. Yes. You could win 1,000 people to the Lord. You know, you could street preach, you know, 24-7. You know, you could do all this witnessing and all that stuff. But if you don't spend time with your family, especially, you know, man, woman, as ho- head of the household, you know, head of the children and all that stuff, you don't do your duty, duties conflict. Yes. Then you are not going to be blessed. And that's not an exemplary Christian. That's not an exemplary Christian family. So don't let duties conflict. You have to prioritize. Right? It's always good to read the Bible, but don't read it 24-7 and doing nothing else. It's always good to witness. Don't just go out there and witness all the time, but you, don't, you neglect prayer, family, and the Word of God. You have to make sure that you live a balanced life. Amen. Yes. I mean, when we even look at Joshua, he had a good excuse. He's like, man, oh God, you know, we just got defeated. You know, everybody wants to quit. I want to quit. But God said, why is this happening in the first place? It's because of sin. And once Joshua realized sin problem, and now he's taking action. Once you know that you have a sin problem, you have to take action. Yes. That's the first thing you got to do. Amen. I mean, there, there's nothing good about not doing anything about your sin. You have to do something. You know, Bible says, right, Isaiah 59, 2, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not answer. You can pray all you want. He can't answer because of your sins. So you have to get to praying right away. Again, in the New Testament, you know, you, you're, part, you're part of the body of Christ, and you have to make sure. You know, just because you're not going to burn in hell, you will be condemned, though. Yes. Not eternally, but physically. The Lord's going to judge you. So don't be foolish. You know, I'm going to go to heaven no matter what. I mean, that's the worst attitude. You know, you hear this so-called saved Christians, you know, who leaves the Bible living church. You know, I'm still going to heaven. Well, you've done a lot of damage, right? Well, you know, you've done a lot of damage to the body of Christ. And you think God's going to just, you know, say, oh, yeah, it's okay. You know, I'll see you in heaven and that's it. No. Oh. You will be punished. Everlasting shame. Let's go to verse 11. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant. If you were to look at this, well, why was it such a horrible sin that Achan committed? So in the first 10 chapters of Joshua, there are 10 cities Israelites attack. Jericho is the first of those 10 cities. And God told them that the gold, silver, brass, iron, everything, the first city belonged to him in Joshua chapter 6. But what happened? Everything else from the nine other cities, Israelites, were able to take the spoils, right? But first one, no. This was a tithe. This was the tenth. Those... Israelites were commanded to give God the first fruits, according to Leviticus chapter 23. And that included the first fruits of their conquest when they took the land of Canaan. Jericho was the first fruits. It was a tithe. When Achan took part of the spoils, he took what? He took the Lord's tithe and fell under the curse of Malachi chapter 3. Will a man rob God? This guy robbed God. So that's why a whole nation was being affected. When you rob God, you think you could get away with it? No. I mean, this is why it's a cursed thing, right? He did. And, you know, in the New Testament, it's, it's you too. Right? Yes. I mean, if you want to be blessed, you know, give your first fruits to the Lord, right? You don't, you know. I mean, don't expect suddenly, like, you get all the blessings. That's why what Achan did wasn't just stealing. I mean, he robbed God completely, right? And 
now you see that, wow, man, this is a, I mean, it's not just a huge sin. I mean, it's a tremendously, you know, enormous sin that this person committed. And as we continue, and when we go to verses 16 through 21, now there's the exposure of sin. You never want to get to this point, brethren, because when it's being exposed, it's being exposed to the whole world. And also, you know what it does? It brings that stumbling block. It brings that obstacle. It brings that bad name to the name of Lord Jesus Christ. They're like, yeah, you know. They're so-called Bible-believing church, but they, have a, they always bicker inside, you know. I look at it. You know. I mean, they still against their own God. Forget it. You give ammunition to enemies when you sin in that. I mean, when, when sin is found in the camp. Because everybody sins. Don't get me wrong. Don't fool yourself. I don't fool myself. You know, we always sin. Yes. Until we go to heaven, until we get the, you know, resurrect the perfect body, right. we're going to sin. Yes. But don't go out there with a trumpet. Like, you know what? This is what I'm doing. <laughs> You know, you know, this is what I'm doing, you know. You get all the attention to yourself and you're like, yeah, this is what I'm doing, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, pastor won't know, right? You know, well, let's do it, guys. Yeah. Then what does, I mean, Joshua didn't know. I mean, he was innocent. He didn't know what was going on. But God said, okay, now you took action. Now you got up, right? Now let me show you. And when you go to verse 16 to 21, out of like about 1.5 million people, God just chose the single person. There are no coincidences in life. You're committing sin inside the camp, God's gonna, I mean, we're very few. We're not 1.5 million, right? You know, we could actually name everybody inside the camp. Don't you think God's gonna reveal it? Yes. He will. The thing is, Achan had guilty conscience the whole time, though. Yeah. For some of you, you have sinned, and you have that guilty conscience. You're sweating every time your name comes up. Another person's name comes up. You're sweating because you're so scared that your sin will be exposed. Wow. Think about Achan as... Joshua's going through the tribe and the families and stuff. Probably he was like, you know, so nervous. He probably was going to faint. I mean, you can't learn, you know. There's nothing you can hide from God. There's no hiding anything from God, literally. Bible says in Proverbs 15.3, the eyes of the Lord, Lord are in every place. Every place you could hide, you could erase everything. You know, people think that they're technically savvy nowadays, right? You know, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna take this laptop, phone, everybody. I'm not even gonna take chance. I'm gonna take it to the expert, you know, cybersecurity expert, and erase everything on my phone. You could do all you want, but the Word of God says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. There's no hiding. Right? Jonah tried to hide. He couldn't hide. David tried to hide. He couldn't. Right? You could see that every one of us, saved, unsaved, have to give account to God. I mean, if you don't get anything out of it, this is a lesson. You and I will give account of ourselves to God for all the hidden sins. Obviously, you know, exposed sins as well. Yes. All the hidden sins. Achan had all the chance. Achan was warned ahead of time. Right. He was warned ahead of time about his sin, that it will bring curse to the camp. But he ignored it. He coveted it. And then he sinned. I mean, covetousness is like idolatry, right? Yes. You know? 
as a, new, as a Christian in the New Testament, if you know that you are living in sin and you have sin in the camp that you brought, you have to confess. You have to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. That's the solution. I mean, true repentance is like David. You know, it's not like Pharaoh. It's not like Judas, right? You have to first notice when someone's truly repenting, you know, they don't say, I've sinned against you, I've sinned against others. No, they say right away, they sinned against God. Yes. That's number one. I mean, you sinned against God. I mean, think about it. You don't feel no significance when you say, oh, I've sinned against him, I've sinned against her. No big deal, you know. They wronged me in the past, blah, blah, blah. That's how you never change. Because first thing is that you have to understand that you've sinned against God. No one else. Then should, shouldn't you feel like, shouldn't you take action? I've sinned against Almighty God. I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I got to get on my knees, get on the floor, and then confess my sin to the Lord. Amen. And that's why the Bible says, new Christians, right? You have to mortify these of the body. You got to kill it. Yes. You don't. You have to confess all those sins. David confessed that I have sinned against the Lord in 2 Samuel 2.13. The prodigal son said, uh, prodigal son, he said that I have sinned against heaven. Right? That's the approach and attitude you should do it. Unlike Judas, you know, I'm a sinner, but he went to who? To priest. I mean, that's not going to help, right? No. You know, Saul, no repentance at all, you know. I mean, when Saul said, I have sinned, he meant that, let me go on being a king as if nothing ever happened. You guys, so many of you guys, Christians, are like Saul. Let me just go on as nothing has happened. Right. Uh, there's all the records behind you. Yes. When I mean, there's all the things, evidence over there. And you think you could just go ahead and say nothing has happened when you have damaged the body of Christ, when you have sinned against God? Then how can God justify sending a soul to eternal lake of fire when he's not just about everything? So don't fool yourself. You know, if you have sin in the camp, if you are living in sin, it's time for you to get right. Amen. Man, out of it all, you know, God is still full of grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. I mean, if you are saved, the Bible says in Romans 8, 28, right? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. You still can get right with the Lord. Yes. You still can end up you know, at a better place. Yes. You still can keep that, you know, sliver of testimony that you could still keep, right? And you could rebuild it. Amen. There's a chance. There's hope. But in order for you to do that, as your sin is being exposed through preaching, through the Word of God, Amen. you have to get right. Yes. Right? Thank God that you and I are not living under Old Testament yeah. law. Man, we'll all be dead already. Amen. I mean, we would have been stoned already, yes. right? You know, how many times have you coveted? Have I coveted, right? Just that alone. You know, we covet just comes pride, yes. right? How many of you have been prof, I mean, profitable, right? Yes. Full of pride. No humbleness in anywhere to be seen. Right. Disrespectful to parents, right? Yes. I mean, disrespectful to authorities everywhere, yes. right? But thank God that you and I have chance. That's why first... John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But again, it's not just half-hearted Judas, Saul, you know, saying sorry. Pharaoh saying sorry. Yeah. It has to be like David. It has to be like prodigal son. You go to God. I mean, God, I have sinned against you. Yes. Then your heart wouldn't just play around with God, right? Then you have to get right because... Your end as a Christian could be just like Achan. I'm sure you'll still be in heaven, right? 
you know, if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's 100%. You got to go to heaven no matter what. Yes. Thank God, you know, that salvation is so simple. But you will have to understand all the things that was written in the Word of God as well. You know, as a congregation, I mean, what did the Corinthian church do? Gave that person to the devil. That's what you got to do. I mean, if you are going to stay in your sin and sin is going to be stayed in the camp, you know, you got to be given to the devil. Yes. Maybe then you have chance to come back, like Second Corinthians. I mean, the, the, the brother got right. So, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't know about the second part. The person actually got right. Amen. But until that time, I'm sure there was a period where church had to do their job, the church brethren, and that guy had to get right with the Lord, right? Some of you aren't, you are at the door of that stage, right? You're so close. Yeah. You're just about, to, you know, it, there's a warning. Do not open the door. But you're trying to open the door. And Lord has jammed it from the other side so that he'll give you another chance. But he says, okay, that's it. You open the door, and you're going to fall. And when you fall into that ditch, that pit, it's going to be almost impo improbable. I didn't say impossible, right? Yeah. Almost improbable to get out of it. Yes. Because you are such a full of sinful, I mean, you, you, you don't even care. Your attitude just shows right away. But thank God that it's not Old Testament. You would have been dead. I mean, I would have been dead. But Lord gives his grace and mercy for you to get right. Is there sin in the camp? Are you bringing sin into the camp? You have to get right. Not tomorrow, not months from now, today. Let's pray. Dear Father, sometimes we just get blinded by devil, the world, and the flesh that we take sin so lightly. We think that we're just sinning against some other people, but when it is sinning against you, I pray that all of us will realize that when we sin, we don't just sin against people or whatnot, but we're sinning against you. Help us to get right with you. Help us to realize that you are not going to allow sin to dwell in the camp. You have to expose it and you have to punish it. Before all of us get caught red-handed like Achan, help us to get right with you. Help us to truly confess our sins, repent, just like David. Just get right with you, Lord God. I'm pretty sure many Christians are just living in guilty conscience state. That's not a way to live a Christian life. I pray that we'll have that spiritual discernment to move and get right and don't look back and just march forward living in your will and being that example, the light to this lost world. And above all, Lord God, please, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.